It was a quiet afternoon and I heard the buzzer going. Um, and I got up, I said to Dermot, you know, my turn, I'll get up and serve. And I got up to serve him and he was at the gateway to our counter to come in. And he started to shove at me and he was screaming. I could not make out. He was just this high pitched, horrible screaming. And I saw something coming at me, which initially I thought was a taser. And I sort of put my arms up to protect myself. And um, it was a large 20 centimetre carving knife. And he grabbed hold of me and he started beating me up and stabbing me and he pushed me over. And Dermot's run out to protect me. And um, he knocked Dermot over and we both jumped up and we're both effectively, by that point, he's frenzied, trying to fright him off one another. Dermot's trying to fight him off me. And I'm trying to fight him off Dermot. And um, he's a huge block. He's these huge shoulders. And he, he has literally picked me up and he's just fired me six foot across the room. And I smashed into a glass, plate glass cabinet, which shattered into my back. Um, I've then jumped up and he's knocked Dermot over on the floor and Dermot's put his legs up in the air trying to protect himself and he's gone around Dermot and he's plunged the knife into him twice. The second time the knife went through him, the full 20 centimetres went through his liver, his heart and his lung. And you wonder why I'm upset. <laughs> that to me is horrific. He had opportunity to run out. He's then got me and he stabbed me again. Um, I do not know how Dermot got up off the floor. Um, Gavin Perry has run out of the shop and Dermot's just got up off the floor. And we're both just shell-shocked and we're initially not saying anything to one another. And then Dermot's just looked at me and his last words to me was, Call an ambulance, I've been stabbed. Just prior to him saying that, and Gavin Perry is running out the door, and this wasn't reported. He's turned around and he's looked at me, and he saw this beautiful pendant on my neck, and he's run back into the snore, and he snatched it off me. And that's when Dermot said it to me, and he was so white. Um, I've just raced to grab the phone, uh, I was hysterical. By that point, um, people had run in because the screaming, screams of Gavin Perry and I was screaming for help were horrendous. And it, they, two passerbys run in and we were, they were so kindly doing CPR on them and every compression just sent volumes of blood out of his body. I had to watch that. I had to watch him die in front of me. <laughs> And I just don't think 20 years is justifiable. Gavin Perry had a couple of opportunities to run out of our store. He was frenzied. He was premeditated. Uh, he stole the knife. He knew what he was doing. Can I ask you, Neil, if you were working in a business and this happened to you and your wife, would you be happy with 20 years and two years from my stabbing, which I was stabbed several times, I had a plastic surgery, would you be happy? I don't think anybody would be. And no. I think I, I know it's so painful to describe it again, but the, because you describe it, it illustrates the paucity of the sentence. It, it, it illustrates why this isn't enough. It's not enough, Neil. And I know no sentence will ever be enough for us. And the judge in her summation, I will have to say, was excellent. And I do believe the judge was acting in the parameters of what she can act. And I don't know. A murderer's life in Victoria. 20 years for what happened. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I just don't get it.